and we're back and we have the one the only the radio personality heard around the world the leader of positivity bringing out the best in all of us mr dave henning dave how are you today sir well i'm doing pretty great can you hear me okay yeah i can hear you wonderfully sir yes thank you <clears throat> i'm trying not to use my game show voice <laughs> 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 you know, uh, now that uh, the Jeopardy guy died, maybe I'll take over that show. <laughs> I, you know what? I could see you succeeding in that. You know, can you just do me like read a quick segment? Like, oh, we have names that start with the letter D for a thousand, like stuff like that. Like, I could see you being up there having yeah. a good time with that, Dave. It would be the most boring. It'd be the most boring job in the world for lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, isn't that the end game? You want to be on top, but make make the most, but do the least. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? That's what the yeah. hard work is? Yeah, I used to have a blog called uh, Full-Time Money for Part-Time Work. I was spoiled as a DJ because my full-time job was a four-hour air shift. I'd go in at, at, five, at five in the morning, uh, and uh, Bob, you'd relate to this in the old days of pulling vinyl albums out and piling oh, yeah. them up, and uh, the, the cart machines and the commercials, and yeah, you're you're like, no wonder I have ADD, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, always, I always wanted to go into radio, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was where the, those were the good old, good old days. My, my boss was a partner with Wolfman Jack. Remember Wolfman oh, yeah. Jack? Oh, hell yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is so, incredible. Oh, uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, I, I was famous. <laughs> I was I was famous for about, you know, 15 minutes, as Andy Warhol used to say. We're all famous for about 15 minutes. <laughs> but Bob, Bob, I was on. I was I'm sorry. I was on the show, Bob, but with you and Miss Carly. And I, I said to myself, I will never be on a podcast more than 30 minutes long. And I watched this two hour podcast freaking, you know. You know, and I'm going, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And uh, and of course, uh, it was I wasn't, you know, Brandon really didn't exactly explain this because I was really interested in your Harley. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sitting yes. on him now. Man. I don't know if you can see him, but I'm sitting on him right now. Oh, sweet, <laughs> sweet. Well, my brother and sister-in-law in in, uh, in Ohio, south of Akron, they both uh, were had the world's record for husband and wife team with with Harley Electroglides or whatever the heck they had. And they they uh, they drove down to Dallas to see their former pastor. Then they went across to the to the bike week at Daytona and then came back to Ohio. And and by accident, they stopped and visited me. So, <laughs> so anyway, you, you, yeah. you've got a great story, Bob. I love it. Well, thank you. Yeah, my me and Bullwinkle, I bought him in uh, 2016 with eight miles on him, and I'm almost at 157,000 now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's, he's been a so, hell of a bike, man. <laughs> now, Dave, you have built a career. You've done a lot of great things. But one of the things that you really had a good time talking to me about was how you can build an income off of only working four hours a day and how well you did with that. And I want to be able to teach, have you come in and talk about that a little bit because Bob is someone who he's out there giving so much and being able to know that all of our, our listeners can actually live their best life and give back, whether it's doing voice work or whatever, you have ways of helping people be able to build their best self with the positivity and all that that you bring. Can you talk to us about that and how we can get to a six figure income working only four hours a day? Thanks, Brandon. That's a that's a really great question. And, uh, you know, I've always I've always been a guy who listened to uh, radio station W E I T, which stands for whatever it takes. So I've owned uh, some small businesses. I've owned some franchise. I owned a, I was a janitor in in college, and I owned a cleaning franchise and all this stuff. Insurance agency. I worked with Fran Tarkenden for a while in Atlanta with his insurance agency, and all these different things that I tried. Uh, all, the point being, I was spoiled by that four-hour radio shift, and I I was thinking there's got to be a way, right? And so, quite frankly, as I was sharing sharing with you, Brandon, and, you know, basically in the next 30 minutes or so, I will show you a couple of different things that I'm super passionate about is helping people, helping small business owners who are struggling right now all across the United States and everywhere else. In the next 30 minutes, I'm going to show you how to eliminate expensive legal fees, protect and grow your small business, pay off your credit cards, and 
make an extra six-figure income part-time in as little as four hours a week that automatically pays you over and over again every year. So would that be helpful, Brandon? You know, Absolutely, yes. I, I muted myself because I talked so much I didn't want to interrupt you. I wanted yeah. to make sure I paid attention. Dave, so, so what would be my first step? How do I start this? Do I move in with you? <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> you know, most people would think that that is totally ridiculous. So I want you to stick around to the end of this podcast. I want you to prove me wrong. And I, you know, Dave, you're crazy. Yes, I am. That's true. But nevertheless, uh, if you're serious and not just curious, I can show you how this works. It isn't for everyone, and it may or may not be for you. No problem. You know, won't hurt my feelings. Uh, so stick around. At the end of the show, I've got a free gift for you, and I've got a, a link that I'm going to share with you that would be a personal one-on-one -on -one time with me where we can answer your questions, discuss this, make see if it make, even makes makes sense for you. And so that's, that's kind of what it's about, uh, Brandon. I love it. Thank you, Dave. So, all right, first step. I obviously can't move in with you, but where can I go to get myself working only for, cause I, like you said, two hour show, that's just Tuesday for me by the time I've already done like four hours. So I've already got that in by Tuesday. What can we be doing to help build this income? So I'm not having to do the other 12 hours a day of work. Right, exactly. Uh, well, it's called a, a, a ROI, return on investment. You, you invest a certain amount of time you get trained to do it the right way, and it's actually a, a duplicatable system that actually works. And quite frankly, I did this years ago uh, when I had a flip chart and I rented a chiropractor's empty office and I was sh showing people this little plan, and, and it, the light bulb went off on how this actually works. You know, I don't know if it was Jay Paul Getty or some famous dude that said, uh, I'd rather uh, get paid uh, 1%, you know, 10% uh, from a uh, hundred people than one percent of my own work so it's it's building a, it's building a team just like a football team and an nba team a bad you know the uh who just won the world series i didn't even watch it atlanta won fantastic so uh here's why most people don't believe a subscription plan for getting legal help is real you know people are saying you know you're full of yogurt <laughs> and uh some business owners think that if it's cheap it can't be real and then I've met people who said, well, you know, I tried an online legal service. I Googled it and it didn't work. And, oh, it must be paralegals or inexperienced lawyers right out of college. You know, how reliable can that be for crying out loud? Well, it's more trustworthy to go see an attorney and the person sitting by behind a big oak desk in his or her office one on one. That, that makes it more trustworthy. Uh, or I want to keep my same lawyer out. You know, my cousin, I've had him for a long time. <laughs> even if he only practices one area of law. And, and then, of course, there's people to think, you actually think that the law is fair in your legal issue. Are you kidding me? Uh, so you assume, And then some people think you'll, you, you think it's going to take way too long to get an answer and you need to get an help right now. So if you're out there nodding your head in agreement with me, I'm going to predict that you have had legal problems with vendors or employees or you've not yet found an answer, you've had people who owe you money and you're giving up trying to get your money. Maybe you're stressed out, busy, just running your business and trying to keep it open. And maybe you do a Google search and you're staring at all, all these local lawyers, like scratching your head thinking, hey, who in the world do I trust? I've paid lawyers before. I have paid lawyers before who did nothing, got no results and kept adding on hours billing me for everything as little as maybe paper clips or something. $300, $400 an hour. It's not worth it, right? So years ago, believe it or not, before I knew about this system, uh, we actually had a family relative, an attorney, charge us $500 to have his paralegal write us a letter for to a home improvement company, if I told you the name, you know exactly who they were, where my wife got hurt in the parking lot, 500 bucks for one letter. So is there a better way? That's the question. Do you want to know about a better way? Yes or no? Absolutely, yes. Okay. All right. I'll tell you. It's a little story I got here. I've been doing I've been with this company about 16 years. We're celebrating our 50th anniversary. 50 years we've been around doing this. How is this possible? You may have heard of it, you may not have heard of it. Uh it's called Legal Shield. It was under a different name some years ago. Uh and uh but it started from a head-on car crash lawsuit. Uh, 
the guy who, uh, that started this thing, he was a school teacher, like a lot of people working that second gig. He was selling life insurance in the evenings. Some lady crossed the line and hit him head on. And then uh, she got an attorney and found that, oh, he had had, you know, maybe a speeding ticket in the past. So she sues him. He has to, like, mortgage his, sec take a second mortgage on his house to hire an attorney. He's thinking, man, there's got to be a better way. So to answer my questions that I wanted to know when I did my due diligence is this, to answer those questions you might have. Our seasoned attorneys have an average of 22, hour year, 22 years of experience in every area of law, in every state in the United States, in every province of Canada. And uh, we have from real estate contracts, landlord contracts, buying a car contract. Did you ever sign a contract and you didn't have, you're like, oh yeah, I, I'm not going to read this. It's kind of like you're Apple update contract. Whoever reads those, nobody. <laughs> right? No. So click yeah. okay. I, 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 it takes forever to download. By the time you're done, you're just like, yeah, accept. Okay, you're reading my data. Thanks yeah. for knowing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so our we we actually hire and monitor law firms for top notch customer service. They are prepaid, and they're get this. They're required to call you back within four hours or less the same day to answer your questions to tell you your rights. And what the law says you can and cannot do. It's kind of like what Uber and Lyft did to improve transportation, how Netflix delivers movies right to you online. It's a, it's, we are also a subscription-based crowdfunding model. Our law firms are prepaid a lot of money, just like, uh, just like the movie stars or, or, uh, or uh, rock and roll people have their own. You know, I'm like a rock star, basically. I, I always wanted to be a rock star, but... Uh, but I, I, I'm like a rock star in terms of I have access to an attorney 24 hours a day, even for uh, emergencies. And uh, they're required to provide excellent service. And so um, I'll tell you a story that I'm really excited about, that um, I was working with a company when I was living back in Charlotte, North Carolina. I lived back for about 20 years. I was sharing this concept with a window company, custom window company, and their customers were all, you know, contractors and builders. And he had this one guy that owed him $15,000. And the guy was over 90 days past due on a collection letter. And, uh, you know, he did, never got a collection letter. And, I, and uh, he never paid. He wouldn't return phone calls. So I showed this new friend of mine, here's how I can get you a small business owner legal plan. It includes collection letters. He, he paid whatever it was for the very first payment. I don't know if it was $49, $89 way back then. And I gave him the law firm that we had in North Carolina, which up in Raleigh. Uh, and uh, he called the law firm. They wrote a collection letter to this gentleman with, with about 30 or 40 lawyers' names across the top. You'll never guess what happened, Brandon. <laughs> about a week later, the, the, this customer comes in and strokes the check for $15,000, gets his bill current, after this gentleman that I, my friend, my new friend in life, uh, paid his very first payment on a legal plan. In other words, he paid for his legal plan probably for the next 20 years out of one collection letter. Is that wow. is that incredible? You know, imagine how it made me feel, the gratification, yeah. the gratification of helping somebody that needed help. I'm in the business of helping people. And my whole career in radio, when I, I took myself off the air, actually, to... Uh, my son was born early, uh, had cerebral palsy, and so I some, had some medical expenses, and I asked the boss, can I uh, make get a raise? He says, no, but if you'll go into the sales department over there across the hall, I'll give you a desk, and you can go out and give yourself a raise. So, um, you know, have, having, uh, having done that, um, you know, I, I, I realized that I got to hit the sidewalk. I was full of fear. I didn't like the concept of walking to talk, walk into the stores and talking to people. I got over it real quick because I became their, their top salesman at that radio station. Uh, but the point is, I love walking into a store. Hey, how's your kids? How's your dog? You know, uh, uh, hey, Dave, come on. In. Good to see you because I was, I was being successful and success to me was helping people. Make right. sense? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So I can give you a couple of quick examples of I've used it myself. I called up my law firm in, uh, in California. They're actually the law firm for the Los Angeles Dodgers. They're the law firm for some rent-a-car places. But we are their biggest client because we pay them 
just under two million dollars a month to represent our over 400 400,000 members in the state of California. And so I am like a rock star or a movie star who has access to not one, but 49 different attorneys in every area of law to get answers. So the last time I had a speeding ticket, I used to get lots of speeding tickets. Uh, I, for some idiotic reason, we decided to drive from California down to uh, West Texas to see some family. On the way back, I'm on this road in uh, in uh, New Mexico, heading north to Albuquerque, you know, turn left, go through Bakersfield and up, you know, go north. And uh, so it's, if you've been to New Mexico, you know, it's like desert on both sides of the road. And there, it, was a, it was a very nice uh, paved, beautiful interstate highway. I'm going a little fast. Okay, I, I confess. And, uh, and this, this, this one car comes slowly down the other direction, sure enough, it's a police officer. He does a U-turn. Very nice gentleman. I respect police officers. I have family members that are yeah. police officers and veterans, by the way. Uh, I, I work with a lot of veterans as well. And uh, so he, he writes the ticket. He says, uh, hey, do you have any questions? I says, yeah. Is it true that Billy the Kid was killed in that town back there? <laughs> you know, for some reason, he just did not have a sense of humor, man. I don't know. What <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> that would throw me off if I'm the cop. I'm going to be like, wait, what? Like right off the bat, I would be laughing. I'm like, what? That's all. I, I like you for having fun with the police. Sorry, go ahead, Dave. So here's the here's the cool part. We have an app, we have an app. I have an app on my phone for my legal plan and my identity theft plan, and I can pull. I can before I leave this the curb of the road, I can take a picture of the speeding ticket. It goes automatic to my law firm in California in Los Angeles, and also they found me an attorney to represent me in Albuquerque. Who rep I did not have to go to court, uh, did not have to show up. I get this letter from the Albuquerque attorney who says, uh, 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 the Honorable Buddy J. Hall uh, issued you a 90-day deferred sentence and an $80 court cost. I paid nothing for the Albuquerque attorney. I paid nothing for the Los Angeles attorney. I paid the $80 court cost, but here's the cool part. No points on my license, no increase my insurance. Uh I, I I need you when I get pulled over. Like next time I get pulled over, because I I've been told I have a lead foot. I don't know. I just the car likes to go fast. I just let it do its thing. <laughs> and, and, but like I need that type of help from you. Like Dave, that's a pretty cool thing to be able to like have that connections where you're able to do this, and the cops are. I, I wish I had that. Like I, you're going to be my new best friend, just so you know, so that way we can I can get away with this. Well, have the cool ever, part is, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Bob. Go ahead. I'm listening. Have you ever had a cop pull you over and uh, instead of giving you a ticket, give you money? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an answer to prayer. <laughs> I have. Right. I honest to God did, man. It was it was crazy. Chief of police in Winterset, Iowa, pulled me oh. over, and uh, I thought he was going to give me a ticket because I had a tail light or something on it. I walked over to him, stuck my hand out to shake or yeah, reached in to grab my wallet to get my driver's license out. And this guy comes up walking up to me with a grin like a possum eating something nasty. And I thought, this guy's gonna be a prick, man. And he gets out of his car and I'm walking toward him and he just gets out and throws his hand out and he said, Man, I just had to meet the legend. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? You know? He said, I've been following you for two years on Facebook. I heard you were in town. I, I saw the bike. I ran the plate. I just had to meet you. <laughs> oh, my God. gosh. Chief of Police Winter said Iowa. His name's Kenneth Burke, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. See, it's the Harley, man. It's the Harley. Yeah, yeah. I love it. He, I love it. He don't it. draw any chicks, but boy. <laughs> <laughs> It draws chicks from he, South Africa. I'm on my yeah. way, Uncle Bob. I'm on my way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my God. Michael's the worst damn chick magnet I ever saw. Not, not much of a wingman at all, man. <laughs> well, well, you know what? Uh, well, you, you know what women in a bar say when somebody's trying to hit hit on them, right? Uh, hey, baby, what's your sign? No trespassing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. No, so, go ahead, Elsa. I want to ask, um, do you only help people that have businesses and so with legal problems, or do you help anybody like mothers that go through 
child support or, or, or those kind of things? Do you help them as well? Oh, that is a fantastic question. Absolutely, yes. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, family plans for individuals, family, single moms, uh, single dads, uh, whatever, and we have a, a, a full uh, array of services that that we offer. And uh, you know, just for another uh, quick example, if if I may, j- because you know, when you're thinking about hours per hour with the typical average attorney, and I have a lot of attorney friends, quite frankly, that I highly respect, and the, there are others that are not respectable. Let me just put it that way. I was going to say I was going to say something else, but I won't say that. Um, but uh, for example, um, my wife had never been to Washington D.C. We wanted to go up and go to the Ford Theater and tour. We had a, our congressman gave us a, a private tour of the Capitol, which was really cool. We're on our way up, and uh, we decided to stay in a name brand hotel in Maryland, I think it was. And uh, so we get to the very nice hotel. Typically, we get to our room, and there's ants crawling on the floor in the bathroom. There's crumbs on the floor. I politely went down and I says, "Hey." We have ants in our room. Uh, do you have a different room we can change to? He says, I'm sorry, sir, we're booked up. But what we'll do is we'll send one of our people up there with insecticide to spray your room full of insecticide. <laughs> and I thought, I don't think so. So we, uh, we, we checked out. We found another hotel down in D.C. And um, they billed us uh, anyway $344.10 at this hotel. And uh, so I thought, well, you know, we have an expression, uh, don't get mad, get legal shield. I did not get mad. I did not say, let me talk to your supervisor, which is totally worthless, as you we well know. Uh, and so I called my law firm at that time it was in, in North Carolina, and they wrote a nice, friendly demand letter to uh, not the hotel, but to the, to the president of the hotel chain. Uh, and when you send a letter to... Uh, to customer service, it goes to the customer service department. When you send a letter to their legal department, totally different story. A week later, one week later, we got a refund for $344.10. I'm not gonna pay an attorney 400 bucks for that letter. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, so how can people be able to have these types of benefits like you have like signing up do i can they sign up to be in your on your app how do they get involved like because bob i know is he's he's doing what he can to give back and i know if i give bob 50 dollars, 40 of that's going to go to somebody else and 10 goes to him just because he has such a big heart sure how can we get people like him like how do they know they can use this service to be able to help uh, to be as cool as you dave Oh, stop it, please. I'm embarrassed. No, not really. <laughs> um, um, no, actually, this is so cool. Um, uh, let me just mention our CEO, Jeff Bell, is a friend of mine. He actually worked, he actually worked uh, uh, directly for, for uh, Bill Gates at Microsoft and invented the Xbox and Halo. So he's really big in the subscription-based model. And he also ran uh, ran Ford Spain. He was high up in the, the Ford company and stuff like that. All that to say, he is so techy that he has come up with a way. My my company website. You can go on my website. You can go through the plans. There's a little two minute video about each plan to explain it. Then there's a, a learn more button. You can see about the whole thing. I'll get on there with you and walk you through signing up anywhere in the United States and or Canada, all seven provinces of Canada. Last year we added Quebec, and, and we have French-speaking French, French speaking members as well. So I can show you how to do that, uh, and it's all it's all online, it's all digital. You'll get a you get a digital membership number that day. You'll get access to your attorney that day, uh, and uh, you can ask questions. I actually send out a letter. That's my letter that shows you, here's how you talk to an attorney. So, make sense? Oh my gosh, yes, perfect sense. I, I just shared your website for everybody here. You can see the link on the bottom, guys. And this is his. This is Dave's website. Go over there, click on it. There's reviews. There's everything. Uh, really quick, because I know this could be something that is an easy distraction for everybody. But what is your uh, Kenya project that uh, that you work on and all that? The Kenyan Children's School, because that caught my attention as well. And I want to be able to bring attention to that because that is a really great thing that you're do- that you do. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, um, uh, 
Uh, my uh, a daughter and son-in-law started that in 1999, and in, in a uh, in a conversation that with their with their porter, they were over there to, on a photo safari vacation, and uh, as it turned out, they made friends with him, and he says, "Hey, we have a need. Our kids are in this remote Maasai tribe area in Southwest Kenya, near the Maasai Mara, you know, across from the Serengeti, where all the uh, lions and tigers and elephants are, and all that stuff." They were meeting under trees with a blackboard. So he built the, they built their first school. And all these years later, we now have, I think, 10 schools, 14, wow. 1,500 uh, children uh, from preschool to eighth grade. And in Kenya, it's the British system. So you have to take a test to even go to high school. And uh, for the first time ever, all of our graduates are passing the test or making it to high school. They actually have to pay to go to high school, bring their own bed, bring wow. their own desk and everything else. So. Wow. I was kind of an innocent bystander. I got to, I got to go on that trip about six times and do some teaching and and uh, speaking over there. And all the campuses have these little little church buildings that are used for a daycare, I think, something like that. So it's been very I've been very blessed to just be in, you know be involved to help out in any way that I can. You know, I'm not a I didn't start it. I'm not the founder. I was on the board for a while, and and then again, as you mentioned, I'm also in a on a board with my friend uh, Nick uh, Nick Palermo, I think Palermo, I think that's Irish. I'm not sure, <laughs> but no, he's a dear friend of mine. We work with the board for disabled uh, uh, teenagers and adults. And uh, since my son had cerebral palsy, I've always had a, a big heart for that organization as well, and connecting with people that uh, have serious uh, serious needs. I think uh, I'll tell you real real quick, uh, Bob, that. Um, my son-in-law served in Iraq with the 101st Airborne. He came home and worked for the for the police department. And and out of all the crazy things that are happening now, he his PTSD kicked in, and uh, he wrote a book on veteran on Memorial Day. He released it on Memorial Day called "From Service to Civilian," and he talked about how close he came to suicide. And I helped him with a little video that I did for him from here where I am in Costa Rica and. Uh, um, it hit I, not because of me, but it hit the, uh, on that day. It hit number twelve bestseller on oh. Amazon uh, oh. that day. I wanted to get the word out about veterans, and I've, yeah. of course, I've told I've told the story of meeting Bob Dole at at a, at a baseball game in Can Kansas City years ago. And Bob Dole used to show up at a at a veteran uh, who had a uh, a Vietnam veteran who had this kind of uh, veterans cafe with all these letters and pictures and stuff. So I'm really passionate about the veterans as, as well and helping them with what you guys are, are doing. Um, uh, in fact, uh, I interviewed these guys, uh, John Galena and Dale Beatty. They were in the North Carolina National Guard. Their Humvee got blown in the air by a, by a, a buried uh, landmine and uh, Dale lost his legs but came back to artificial legs to be a drummer in a rock band and John and Jen, John, they made the, I interviewed them on my radio show uh, North of Charlotte the day after they made the cover of Time Magazine uh, as uh, 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 America's uh, new greatest generation. And so I'm very, I'm very honored to work with veterans, know veterans, help, help veterans. And what they do is they actually remodel disabled veterans homes to retrofit them wow. for disabled veterans all across the United States. Now they started out small and are very well known. So right. yeah, that PTSD thing, man, that, uh, that's, that's bad stuff. I mean, uh, yeah. I used to do a lot of, uh, uh, work with people with PTSD and I always had compassion, always had sympathy for them. But in, brother, when I experienced it myself, it went to a whole new level. That that is such an incredibly uh, it can be a, dil a debilitating thing. Yeah. So because of men, the way we kind of are wired, you know, from my our generation, you know, we don't show emotion and that kind of stuff. And I was like, I can deal with this. I can beat this. But I damn near. I mean, it, it was close. If it wasn't for my faith and Bullwinkle here, I probably would be dead today. Because yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I in in a, just a couple of months time, I lost my wife, I lost my home, I lost my job. I was under criminal investigation for uh, insurance fraud. I mean, I, I lost everything in just yeah. a couple of months time, man. And that, and that and what I witnessed 
that that caused all this in my life, man. Oh my, I still, uh, I, I don't think I've slept a whole night through in six years just because of the the dreams, the all the images you can't. That PTSD thing is bad, man. And, and guys oh, yeah. need to ask yeah. for help. I mean, it, there's no yeah. shame in, hell, yeah. in asking for help, man. That's right. That's right. Yeah, my dad. My dad served in the Army Air Corps in World War II before the Air Force, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, he he was uh, in in intelligence. He was a teletype operator behind enemy lines and stuff. And you know, in those days, it was called shell shock. And yeah. you know, those guys did. You know, my dad died young. He was only forty nine when he passed away. But but um, you know, they didn't talk about it. They no. they just they just stuffed it. Right. It's, yeah. it's called yeah. stuffing it. You yeah. know. Yep. Yeah. 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 But, but so, yeah, I, I encourage anybody, man, don't don't think you're a man enough to deal with it, man. Get help. Uh, I mean, get yeah. help because, you know, it doesn't just affect you. It affects everybody around you, man. And, and if oh, yeah. you take your own life, my God, the de I, I have four friends today who are dealing with suicides, man. And yeah. you don't yeah. want to do that to your family. You don't. Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem, and don't go mm. there, man. Ask for help. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen to that. Uh, yeah. I, I like how you're phrasing that because uh, yesterday we did a veteran show. We do a veteran show every Thursday. It's called Veterans uh, Victor Tango. It's uh, wow. they it, uh, you like that. It's a show made by veterans for veterans to help veterans, and yeah, the show's only been on for couple months now, like two months. And I have to be honest, it's something that I've been blown away by because we get more people that reach out and say, hey, thank you guys for putting this on. I didn't know how I could get help with the VA. I didn't know how I could like fill out my paperwork because for real, it is things as small as, hey, my paperwork doesn't make sense. And because of that PTSD, they don't even realize that it's triggering them and they're not able to fill out their paperwork to get the help they need. So yeah. we've been giving, able to connect them with vets that are like, hold on, let's show you how to do this. Here's a video and here's what we're doing to provide other things. Like here's vets going fishing, like it's a veterans fishing thing to break their minds yeah. free and have those conversations. It's so hearing you guys talk about it is just, I love that. And I have to just give that shout out because we're talking about vets about yesterday's show because we received two emails this morning of people saying, thank you so much. My PTSD has been horrible. I needed help. And they got their not, not only help, but they got the paperwork in. And they know that, that 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 finishing that paperwork is an accomplishment for a lot of people. And man, did that make a big th deal. Yeah. So I just had to jump in there with that one. Um, and, and that's every Thursday at what time? 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, every Thursday, 6 p.m. And that way you could turn it on in the background. And while you're cooking dinner, you're getting home and all that, just let it play off of something and you just listen to the positivity. And when you hear that part that says, yo, I, 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 that's what I need, I needed to help with that, that's where you start to get it. And we just want to fill you with positivity. Help those want, people out. I want to, I, Brandon, I want to promote that for you. And let's talk later and I'll do a little you, on my YouTube channel, do a YouTube uh, video with you on that. I want to promote the heck out of that for you, man. Yeah. I would love that. Thank you so much. And honestly, that's the one show I'm not on. I don't, I just pop, pop in the comments because I, I'm not a vet. My grandpa is, my cousins are, I'm not, but I see the the mental impact it's causing on our generations yeah. on from yeah. yours to mine to all the, after this, and we need to love one each other. So that's what I'm I, 100% Dave, but I want to sure. know more about making Bob six figures. I'm sorry. I got to try to take a step oh. back here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, uh, before I answer that question, I, uh, Hey, Bob, I won the Guinness book of world records for Brandon when he said, uh, what is your what is your favorite quote? So along with what you started the program with with me, uh, Brandon, let me read this real quick, because this is from uh, I got this at a Zig Ziglar event, which is all positivity uh, years ago. Yes. And it was a guy named Tom Hopkins. And he handed out the shower hanger, which I laminated called. He was a famous California real estate guy. Tom Hopkins morning mental wake up. I will win. Why? I'll tell you why, because I have faith, courage and enthusiasm. 
Today, I'll meet the right people in the right place at the right time for the betterment of all. I see opportunity mm -hmm. in every challenge. I'm terrific at remembering names, not. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I fail, I look at what I did right and not what I did wrong. I have clearly defined goals. I never take advice from anyone more messed up than I am. I, I never let a negative thought enter my head. I am a winner, a contributor, an achiever. I believe in me. Yeah. <laughs> So I did being a vet, being a veteran's lingo. I mean, uh, a Marine of all things. Um, I worked with a, a retired. Uh, uh, he is a retired major general in the Marines. That is actually part of my coaching guys oh. that I guys that I work with. But I know there's a great expression that we won't tell people what it means. But you may know what FUBAR means. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, let me get back to answering your question. I apologize for, I don't apologize no. actually. I really don't apologize. I just wanted to get that out there because <laughs> it's all about the message right now. Um, exactly. So I, if, I, Go ahead, Dave, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Well, uh, I don't know how close we are to the end here, but I did want to say that what I'm doing to, to kind of chat with people is, um, I, I'm giving out my website, uh, Dave Henning Online. It goes to my calendar scheduler page. Well, I will be glad to gift you with a 15-minute talk, whether you're a business owner or a family member. I will talk to you for 15 minutes. And, uh, uh, you know, I used to get my uh, – I used to do commercials for $100 a minute. So add that up times 15. That might be the value of this thing. I'm not sure. But uh, – Anyway, I'll give you 15 minutes to talk about this. And what I do is I will invite you or anybody who wants to learn more about this six-figure income thing. We actually have a show tomorrow with a guy uh, in, that was a, a lawnmower guy right out of high school. He mowed lawns for a living until he got involved in this company. He's been with this company for 30 years, and he makes uh, multiple six-figure incomes now um, every year, whether he works or not. Um, right. I have a friend who uh, I have a friend uh, who was a surfer in California. Uh, his son died, I believe, uh, might have been a, a, of a peculiar thing. I won't say what it was. He ended up being so um, depressed, let's say maybe, and he he got a one way ticket to Europe and to Central Latin America. Stayed away f for two years, and we, when he came back, he had more money in his bank account than when he left. Because it's because it's all about the residual income, and I can show you how to do that. For some that want to be on the on the free uh, company webinar tomorrow, that explains the whole thing basically in thirty minutes. You'll get the the big picture in thirty minutes. Uh, fill out the form on DaveHeningOnline.com. Get in touch with me. Don't need to be a small business owner, uh, and I'll talk. I've got time later today. I've got time early in the morning, and uh, and I'll get you that link to get on this show to this. To, to hear this this guy explain, hey, here's what I did and here's how it works. Make sense? Absolutely. I love that. That's so nice of you. I've put the link in there. I've, you've already had two or three people say they're going to get back to you right away, like right off the bat. So that's great news. And guys, the class is tomorrow. You could sign up for, for the 15 minutes. Just take advantage of that and be able to maximize. Dave's giving something that he is amazing at. And he's saying here. Come ready to learn and be able to give the best to yourself. This is amazing that he does this. So, Dave, when I move in with you, I know you said no, but don't worry. It's going to happen, all right? I, I oh, promise. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. you know, I I'm turned, a cook. <laughs> yeah. And I'm pretty down, clean. I, I turned down a six-figure uh, salary type thing uh, yeah. about two and a half years ago, man. I, I mean, yeah. I met a guy, uh, he's actually the drummer, uh, former drummer for Three Dog Night. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, he has, his name's Mike McMeal. He has a program called Inner City Slickers where he takes uh, inner city kids out to ranches and stuff. Awesome. So he, does, he brought a bunch of them out to the ranch that I'm staying at. We got to talk and his wife had just died shortly before that. So we had a connection there. I worked with him that day. And uh, at the end of the day, he's like, brother, you have to write a book. And I told yeah. him I'm trying yeah. to, but I just don't have the discipline. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what I'm doing. I need a ghostwriter or something. So anyway, the next day I work with him again and he had to fly back to Nashville. And at, uh, at dinner, he said, brother, 
you need to do a reality show. And I just laughed. So <laughs> he went to the airport, went back to uh, Nashville. And then two days later, he called me and he said, brother, I just got off the phone with my friends in California and they want to talk to you about a, re uh, a reality show. And I had to say, no, I can't do that. I, yeah, I, yeah. Because the, the things that I do, if people, the people wouldn't reach out to me to come and do what I do if they thought there was a damn camera crew with me. And he kept saying, brother, you don't know the money, man. I was like, brother, I don't do what I do for the money. I do this right. because I love these people right. and I want to help them. And this would be a deterrent to what I do. So I, yeah. I could be living fat and happy right now, but instead yeah. of living happy. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, by the way, Bob, I was at the real Woodstock in 1969. Oh, in the yeah. Catskill mm -hmm. Mountains, I was 17 years old, but that's an aside. To your point, I want to address that point because some people, they're not interested in, you know, being fat and lazy and, and, and all this stuff and having all this money coming in. Uh, the point is, whatever your need is, if you just need to make a car payment, I can show you how to make an extra three, four hundred dollars a month, very simply, an extra three thousand, two, three thousand a month. It's 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 your it's your business. It's your call. We're, you don't work for me. You don't work for us. Mm -hmm. We're a team and, and whatever you want to do is what we want to help you accomplish and be successful at that. Because all of us, especially nowadays, with thousands of people in corporations are being laid off of work or told don't come back. And some people says, I'm not coming back anyway. So why, why are you bothering me? So, so people need a way you know, to make that rent payment, make that car payment, pay off those credit cards. It's a simple, simple system. You don't, I don't need salespeople. Right. Uh, I don't need uh, hustlers. Uh, you know, shills, none of that right. stuff. Right. Uh, so I just want to talk to you. Again, it's not for everybody. It may not right. be for you. Won't hurt my feelings. I just want to get you the information. Mm -hmm. You decide. And whatever your goal is, glad to help. I'm here for you, man. Amen. <laughs> That's really cool, brother. Yeah, yeah. There's so much. There's a need out there. I, I, I see it every day. I mean, it, it's incredible. The, the amount of people that are hurting today, I, it, it's overwhelming. I mean, it is, yeah. it is, yeah. and there's not enough, uh, I, I don't, there aren't enough people doing yeah. the kind of thing that I do. There, there just isn't. I, I, and yeah. I run into it. I have people following me in 60 countries around the world. So my phone is like wow. every time. So, so I'm hearing all the time, every day. And it, it, there's yeah. such a need for what you're doing here, brother. <laughs> Well, and I can help you write your book too. By the way, I can oh, show yeah. you how to. I can show you how to write the book. It's it's easier than you think, and I'll be glad to share that with you personally. No extra charge. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I got a hell of a man. I got like five books. I got I got yeah. six years of life on the road, yeah. meeting the strangest, most incredible people. I, I got some so stories, cool. man. <laughs> That's so cool. It's all about the stories, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. That's what that's what I do, and I just wanted to get the, get the word out that I I want to help people, and I want to say, Brandon, what you said at the beginning, yes, there is hope. We can find we can find hope in some of the worst situations yeah. we find ourselves in, and there is hope, and I I'll be glad to uh, to yeah. share that that hope message with anybody who who is right. willing to li listen. Right. I found a, a really cool message of hope one day. I had to I had to do this thing at last minute. I was. So I've got to speak on an Easter Sunday morning and I had like maybe an hour's notice and I was, oh my God. Well, I was reading this story about the women on the way to the uh, grave to, to take care of Jesus's body. And yes. one of the, one of the, I forget which book, which of the uh, um, gospels it is, but it names three women specifically that go to the tomb. It names Mary, Joanna, and Mary. Now, names are incredibly important in the scriptures, incredibly important. <laughs> Mary means bitterness and sorrow, and but the name that was in the middle of that name, the name Joanna, who was a maiden of uh, Herod or somebody, her name means the goodness of God. And right. like, mm, in between right. the darkness, they're going dark into the, to see Jesus, their dead friend, whatever, and it don't look good at all. But in the middle of that darkness, because those women were faithful to their dead friend, instead of going and finding a dead friend in a tomb, they got to meet the risen Savior because of their faithfulness to him. It looked bad, but in the midst of that darkness, the goodness of God is always at work if we don't give up. That's exactly right. Bob, may I, may I follow up with a little story about a, 
a veteran. This is a God story. I had a friend named Fred Smith. He had a little Christian bookstore on this little old-fashioned downtown Main Street in the town I lived at called Race City, USA, where all the NASCAR teams are. Fred Smith, and he had a little Christian bookstore, Fred and Rosie. And next door, they had a little storefront church, which I actually got to preach in a time or two. And uh, Fred never knew what happened to his father. His father was in was in the military over in Vietnam, and his father passed away, and the the army would never tell him what happened to his dad. Fred, Fred and I used to go down to Richard's Cafe, the one that the veteran guy that had all these pictures on the wall and letters. Uh, and uh, and uh, and Richard says, Fred, uh, tell me, tell. And there was a picture of a helicopter, but there was a helicopter picture. On, but, and Richard said, that's the helicopter that I was the pilot of. And 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 so Richard said, Fred, tell me what happened to your what happened to your father. And and Richard. Get this, Richard is not even from North Carolina. He's from Iowa, but he's living in North Carolina with his little cafe veterans store where I used to get peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> um, and and uh, and Rich, so Fred tells him, well, I don't know, any, oh, this is all I know that he, you know, they wouldn't tell me. Richard said, Fred, sit down. I gotta tell you what happened because, because, because your father crossed over into another company, country, I think it might have been Cambodia, and we were not supposed to be there at that time. The military would never tell you what happened, but I want to tell you what happened. I was the helicopter pilot that went and picked up your dad. His, his, uh, his, his plane crashed into a mountain in Cambodia. I'm the guy that brought your dad back. Can you believe that, that God, God brought these two guys together to, to, yeah. to, to, so Fred could know what happened to my daddy. Yeah. Wow. That, that is amazing. Powerful. That's powerful stuff. Yeah. That that is a, God. <laughs> so yeah. Dave, you've been all, you and I, when we met last time, your internet was having some problems and you were worried and all that. Where are you today? Because I know you live like you, you, you're a traveler and you do a lot of really like cool things and you've lived in different places. Where are you at now? Well, I'm actually on the Pacific coast of Costa Rica in a famous old surfer town where all the Huntington Beach surfers would come in the off season. And there's a guy named here named Robert August who is on that classic film, uh, uh, Endless Summer, the big surfer movie. Robert actually lives here. He's a 75-year-old hippie who drove down here in a school bus years ago. And he still is creating custom uh, surfboards here. So now it's a big tourist town and there's thousands of people that come here. And have I you, moved. Yeah, go ahead. Have you eaten at the in that restaurant? It's the crash plane up in the hill there up outside. On, it's, oh. right, I, I was there a few years back and caught uh, went sailfish fishing and rooster fishing and had dinner in that restaurant there. That the play, I don't know what kind of plane, the big DC something or other there. Oh, I've seen it, but I have not been there. But I have been to the one where uh, I I walked in back in February, and Robert was playing "Endless Summer" in the restaurant and narrating it. It's called it's called uh, Witch's Rock Restaurant, <laughs> <laughs> and the and the sign out out front, which is actually true, is nachos as big as your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then if that's if that's too big they have a half-assed not not show as well <laughs> <laughs> the name it's your half-assed nachos you know i love it uh so i had to run away really quick i'm moving into a new place and my yeah, friends yeah, yeah. came over last night and they gave me a present and i think it's just serendipitous of how the world works the universe works uh from the 1969 <laughs> woodstock it's an actual deck of playing cards that was from Woodstock. And oh my my dad gave it to them. And they're like, you need to have a good set of playing cards. Uh, so they brought me this because their dad and I are like really close to. He calls me his son. And that was their present for me. And then the other part of the present that I didn't grab because I was trying to be quick is uh, an actual part of a meteor that hit the earth. It's a little part of a meteor that I can have. Like, So they were like, these are your two presents to be able to have you welcome and christen your new house that you're moving into so it was pretty stinking cool hey, don't give me that look 
I, I, I have somebody sitting over here giving me a hard time today. Um, but like, it's one of these things where you mentioned it and that you were there and I'm like, oh my gosh, talk about like that happened last night. Like I, I couldn't be more like, wow, like serendipitous. So Dave, we have about 10 minutes left and we usually end the show, but I want to get at least one more part in for you before we go to the end. Okay. Yeah. I want to make sure we hit, like, is there anything in particular that you want me to make sure we get in? Because you talked about the connecting with you. We shared your calendar link for everybody. We've talked about being able to only work four hours a week. We've talked about how you've traveled and been a DJ and then what you're doing with, for your kids and all that being on the board with Kenya. What do you want to make sure everybody takes from this? Cause we've had, we've had a lot of good topics. And as we say here, the squirrels came everywhere today to make sure that we get, <laughs> the attention was going, but what do you want to make sure people walk away from that leave and say, God, I got to connect with Dave. He is an amazing man. Just like they say already. Well, um, I want to give you the definition of FUD, F-U-D. FUD, okay. stand, FUD, write this down. There's going to be a test. <laughs> um, uh, FUD stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, uh, it scares you without presenting a solution with legal shield and id shield you can reduce your worry you can reduce your stress your panic lose the fear uncertainty and doubt uh let me be clear i'm not into abusing my legal plan or messing with people with frivolous lawsuits or getting revenge what i'm into is equal justice for all and as you know in the united states or anywhere else you only get as much justice as you can afford so we have made justice affordable for more people I just sent you earlier this morning uh, a lady who was stopped in her car at one o'clock in the morning and the police, I, I respect the police, so let me be clear. The police says, please step out of your car. And she, they wouldn't tell her why. And so she got on her phone, tapped the app at one o'clock in the morning and got an attorney on the phone that said to the police officer, if it is your intention to question and de detain or arrest my client, please, uh, I represent her, I'm her attorney and the police let her go. And what happened was the bottom, the end of the story is that apparently her car was target was uh, profiled for crossing the border into another state every Monday night. They thought she might be a cocaine dealer. As it turned out, she was actually going to a legal shield meeting every night. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that's funny. So the point is, and she said at the end of her little two minute video that I sent you, she says, I don't want this to happen to my son or my teenage drivers. So you have yeah. you have you have equal justice. You have access to attorneys for all the important things in your in your life. I'm on a mission to help uh, families and businesses restore peace of mind. It's all about having the help that you need when I don't know where to turn. And I got to tell you something. Uh, just the uh, people just go to Dave Henning online. Sign up for 15 minutes with me. I'll take. I'll take up to 10 or 12 calls today. and uh, But let me say this. Can I just say this, Brand, uh, Brandon? Absolutely, uh, Dave. Thank you. I want to thank you for having me here. While well, people are writing down Dave Henning, H-E-N-N-I-N-G, online.com, I just want to thank you for having me here. It's been an honor and a privilege. I've been a big fan of your show when I discovered it and what you're doing here with, with veterans and with the CBD and with the show and everything else you're doing. Miss Carly, oh, amazing. Ugh. And you've created, you know, you've really created an amazing, uh, you know, company that's a, a podcast rather. It's so meaningful and building meaningful relationships and getting results. And I really appreciate investing this time with you and your audience today. I'm so grateful. Um, do you have any other questions for me before we kind of wrap things up here, Brent? Where do you base yourself out of, brother? I'm living in Costa Rica now. Oh, you're living there? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought she was out in California. <laughs> no, I, 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 I escaped. Oh, okay. I'm a, I'm a, refuge, I'm a refugee. I'm, there's a lot of American expats here. A lot of friends oh, yeah. I've made. Yeah. A lot of friends I've made here. Yeah, I met a lot of them when I was down there for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So, Dave, I... I, I I want to bring you back again because you you bring such a positive energy. You are a light that is amazing to so many people, and they don't even like know it. You you have an energy about you that's just so positive. I want you to know how much I appreciate you coming on today. 
Um, guys, the link, no matter whether you're watching Facebook, Twitch, LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever you're watching on, the link is provided here. Click and get your appointment in with Dave, because if you want to change your life, it starts by taking that first step for yourself. And then the other thing is, don't forget to sign up for his YouTube channel. I made sure to share the link on there as well. Oh, thank you. I just, you saw me hit subscribe, guys. Hit the subscribe, just like I tell you guys to do with us. Do it for Dave, because Dave deserves to be able to have, be seen, heard, and known. And this is a man who's doing everything he can. Um, I did get one thing that I have to make sure that I point out before we go, it, or before we go into the last part of the show, is our one of our loyal viewers, Mr. Panda, said, oh, FUD, it stands for Follow Your oh, Dreams. Fun. And I thought that was amazing. I got to bring that in. I'm like, Panda, it's Pensu. I've learned my lesson. I've said it wrong so long. I talked to him on the phone once. He goes, it's actually Pensu. And I had to learn what it meant. I don't think you want to know the definition of it. Uh, it's pretty funny, though. But uh, Dave, go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned my YouTube channel. I've got 100 podcasts on there of some amazing people that you will inspire you. I, I love what I do. With the, that's the whole purpose is to is to bring a valuable, positive stuff. You'll love my podcast. Check them out. Boom, guys! Subscribe. It's right there. All his links are in here. I, I've made sure to share what I can. I, I, guys, it's up to you to make sure you do yourself the best to put yourself forwards. So, Dave, the way we end every episode, no matter whether it's Monday or Friday, is we speak a word of positivity into the world. Okay, so Bob will go first to show you how it's done because he's been here long enough and I never make him go first. Bob, I will Bob, go Bob. second. Yeah. Can we, can we do the go wave? Second. Go, Bob. Go, Bob. Go, Bob. Bob. <laughs> I will go second and then you are going to close out the show today giving that final word to everybody of positivity and take us out. Sound good? I'll think of something. <laughs> oh, you'll do great. I know you will. All right, Bob, tell us your amazing te truth for the weekend, sir. All righty. Well, there was so much in this one. I really appreciate uh, everything we talked about today, Dave and uh, Brandon and Ilse. But uh, the thing that really got my heart was something that hit my own heart at one time. And I, wanna, I really want to encourage, because uh, I know there's people out there that are dealing with PTSD, and it's not necessarily just military. I mean, you can get some horrific uh, PTSD from the battle and whatnot, but there's also uh, PTSD that goes way beyond the battlefield. And I want to really encourage people, if you know somebody, if it's you that, that's struggling with get help get help don't don't try to do it yourself you you don't want to do that i want to encourage you there's always hope there's always uh, there's always a way out if we just don't give up so if you're struggling today don't give up don't give into mm -hmm. it man it's all about a battle for our mind and if I, we can control the narrative up here we can control the way we respond to situations in our world i just want to take a, a, just a second here and pray for some people so Father, I just pray right now that, that those people that are struggling with the, the, the emotional, the, the, the uh, spiritual side of, of this PTSD or any struggles like that, I ask God that you would uh, bring someone to, into their world that will give them hope, that will give them uh, 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 some kind of assurance, Lord, that they're going to be all right. And I just pray that everyone that's, that's dealing with these stressed things in their lives would find the peace that comes through you. And I just ask today that you'll give hope and you'll give purpose and you'll give vision to people who are hopeless and have no vision, no purpose. So I just ask that in Jesus' name. And then for the rest of you, have a great weekend, man. Go out there and love somebody. Go out there and love yourself first so you can love the other people around you uh, uh, the way they really need to be loved, you know? So just go out and make a difference. That's why we're in this world is to make a difference. And, you know, the, the one of my favorite quotes from the scriptures is uh, there's no greater love than to lay down your life for a friend. So go out there and do that today. Lay your agenda down. I don't necessarily mean jump in front of a bullet. 
Go out there and lay your life down. I mean, if you have to, you have to. What's the worst that happens? You end up with Jesus this afternoon. You know, but go out I there mean, and love somebody. Make a difference. I mean, that's one way of doing it. Like, you know, Bob's like, hey, if you got to lay your life down, lay your life down because at least you know you're going to see Jesus after that. Like, yeah. it's a good way of looking at it, Bob. Win win. Wow. It's a win win. That I didn't expect that. That that was funny. Um, I just want to have everybody be able to see how when you really strive to be able to put your best foot forwards, even if when you wake up, your slippers are full of dog poop and it's absolutely not the way you want to start your day. Know that it's your choice to make it a shitty day or actually let it like just be something you wash off and keep going. Live your life to the best of your abilities and don't let the crap that could throw it, it could be thrown at you, whether it's emotionally, spiritually, or even just somebody being a pain in the butt because that's how they are that day. Do yourself the favor of letting it just wash off of you and find the best version of yourself. Amen. Take a moment today, sign up for Dave's class because it's going to be worth it. And give this a podcast, an episode, a like, a share, and a comment because the algorithms only go by how you guys help it run. Uh, so please just help us do what we can to keep spreading positivity, love, and building a community of individuals who know that they can change the world just by starting with a change in themselves. Thank you, guys. That was awesome, Brandon. Awesome. Uh, I wrote this down just now because I'm a copywriter, too. Uh, you, uh, you have a purpose. You, we, all three of us are saying the same thing. You have a purpose. Find your purpose. Find your passion and then you will find peace and forgiveness and truth. Pilate said to Jesus, when Jesus was being questioned, what is truth? And I think uh, I think Bob hit the nail on the head, no pun intended on the nail thing on, on Friday, Friday, but um, there is an answer, there is hope, there is forgiveness, and there is a truth that is the real deal. So God bless you guys, so nice to be with you. I'm here for you anytime. What a great episode. Guys, have a yeah. wonderful one. Be the change you want to see in the week in the, be the change you want to see in the world this weekend. Thank you guys so much. Dave, I'll see you backstage in a second. Have a good one, guys. Hey, Thank God you. Bless, Thanks, guys. Bye. God bless.